Welcome back to another day at Angus Scrunch. We're doing something new here, and I really, really, really want to do a video, informational video on this. Uh, Corvette owners out there, C5, C6, C7 especially. So this is a torque tube for the Corvette. So this takes the front, this is where the trans is, that's where the flywheel is, that's where the clutch is. Obviously it's backwards. Um, but we want to touch a basis on this of what is inside here, what are the things that go wrong? Guys that do racing applications, stuff like that. You may have bought one of these cars. And we had actually had a customer a couple years ago who was like, yeah, I bought it at an auction. I think the motor's bad. Motor wasn't bad. It was actually the rubber couplers inside this torque tube to go bad. So I wanted to do an informational video on it. Basically a little bit of knowledge. Explain what's in here, what how it works, how it goes along, how it incorporates the power line in the vet. And inform people at home that have these. You may be having the same issue where you you know you put it in drive, you're just sitting in a light and automatic, and it's going click 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 click. click. Something sounds like it's knocking underneath your car. Could be the coupler and your torque tube that's coming apart. You don't know. Unfortunately, it's a lot of work to take it apart to find out, but it can save you in the end where you think you got a bad motor, and in actuality, you just got a big uh, coupler inside your torque tube. So, stay tuned. We're going to kind of break it down step by step go through it and describe it and what we need to do. There's also bearings in here if you're gonna go that far. Change the bearings on this torque tube, change the couplers, and just do general maintenance if you're gonna do any power line work or anything else like that. It just makes sense to do it when you get it apart. All right, now we're at the front of the torque tube. This is where your clutch is on a manual car, on an automatic. This will be just a shaft with a, a, a section clamp that goes around it that basically holds it. Uh, it's almost like a flex plate on the back of the flywheel. Um, this, um, for us, is a manual. Um, we did, a while back, we haven't, we didn't film it because it's the first time I had tried it. Um, everybody talks about putting remote bleeders in on these manual cars, and everybody's like, oh, man, everything's got to come apart. you got to take all this stuff out. Well, this is the factory bleeder right here off of this slave cylinder. And here at the shop, it, it took a little bit of trying to understand what was going on and unfortunately my paws are a little too big so we had to have power stroke jack go over there and get his hands up there um, we have figured out a way to put remote bleeders on these cars without completely taking the power line out dropping the torque tube out you know all the rest of that garbage that goes along with it we have found a way to do it i'm waiting for another car to come in to put a remote bleeder on we will film that when it comes in because now we figured out how to do it without taking the entire power line apart so this is pretty much gives you an idea what the slave cylinder looks like on a manual trans. You got a 10 millimeter bolt here. There's another 10 down here on the bottom side. This is your bleeder, and then this is your connection to your master cylinder to your slave. Um, there's normally just a plastic clip in there. You just push it in and then pop it out, and that disconnects it so that way you don't have to bleed it or anything else. You still have to bleed it, but if you're going this far, put a remote bleeder on it and save yourself the time and the effort and the hassles. Now we're moving on to the back part. We, the torque tube, obviously, this section goes to the trans. When you go to slide it out, there's a hole right here. That's for your shifter. Uh, you'll need a roll pin punch in order to knock the pin out so that way you can get the rod out. If you want to pull it all the way out and not disconnect the rod, you can. We're replacing the trans, upgrading it, putting something better in it. So we disassembled it, pulled the roll pin out of it so we can disassemble the trans. But the next thing we're moving on to... Obviously, we got a lot of rust in here. There hasn't been any grease in there in probably in its entire lifetime. And right here is the stamp ring we have to take out in order to try to move the torque tube coupler assembly out of here. Well, most of the time, most of us in the industry, that's the snap ring pliers that we have. And it's like, yeah, that spring's got some pretty good tension on it. Well, we're just going to leave that one right there. It's kind of like the, the average... Vintage tool. Most of us techs got it in our toolbox. Then we move on to Big Bertha. That's a pair of snap ring pliers. That's what you need in order to get this snap ring out. Um, you got to put some tension on it. It's, it's a special order. I wouldn't order one. Um, they're, it's expensive and you're going to do it one time and be like, now what do I do with these things? Uh, hello, Facebook Marketplace or something like that to, to get rid of this. Now you take these big pliers, put them in the snap ring. Boss is always like, when are we ever going to use those pliers again? Well, guess what? We got ourselves a torque tube we got to take apart. So guess what we're using? The tool he wants to know when we're using it again. And that's the big snap ring. Now you grab the biggest hammer you got. No, not the metal one. Grab a dead blow. 
I'm going to have Jack film right here. You'll start watching. Now we took that snap ring out. I'm going to gently tap on the back input shaft that goes into the clutch and into the back of the flywheel, and we're going to walk this assembly out so we can get it out the rest of it. And that is what the inside of your torque tube looks like. The couplers that we're changing are these here. That's the one thing that I was telling you about. If this goes bad, you have metal on aluminum contact. It'll start ratcheting back and forth when it does when this blows up. And I've seen, I had one that blew up and it was that way long enough that it actually destroyed the torque tube. It was on a C7. You don't want that to happen. So stay vigilant if you're hearing noises and stuff like that. Get it to somebody that's certified to work on these cars, somebody that knows how to work on these cars, you know, not just your average garden variety shop. Take it to a Corvette guy, you know, bring it here to HP Performance, call Craig, get it set up so we can look at it. Or if you've got a dealership near you or somebody you trust to work on this thing, get it to them and have them look at it. If you're taking this thing out on Sundays, you know, you get work Monday through Friday, you're like, hey, Friday night, I'm gonna go out and do some hole shots and burnouts and go have some fun and peel the tires off the back. You're going to be changing these couplers sooner than you think. You're going to start taking it apart. Um, we re normally recommend about every 10 to 15 years, depending on how much you drive it. Most of our customers, they're lucky if they're putting two to 3,000 miles on a year. So you can get some time out of them. They're not taking them out and beating the snot out of them. If you do hound on it, you do harp on it, you do take it out and exercise what you've done to it, understand these couplers are going to eventually go bad, and you're going to have to change them. Well, we got the torque tube apart. We got it out. We slid the intersection out. So let me give you a breakdown of it. This is your input into the back of your motor. This is your rubber coupler that goes bad. This is your support bearing or your idler bearing. This is basically a spacer so that way it doesn't get out of whack. This is one of the first things that you start hearing, the, the knocking. You know, like somebody's like, not that loud, but, you know, you get an idea of what it is. This will start going first. So this kind of keeps it centered in the tube. And then back here is your back portion that goes into the front, uh, front of your trans. Some will have a torque plate on them. It goes into an automatic, like a torque converter. You know, obviously it'll be a little different. The input will be a little different. The output shaft will be a little different depending on your application, automatic or manual. But overall, it's still the same. You still have these rubber couplers. Well, after two sockets and broke one ratchet, you see why GM's got a little bit of Loctite on there. Um, the back portion is metal. The front portion is aluminum. Anybody that knows what aluminum, you don't want to heat it up. You start fatiguing it. Same with metal. You start heating it up, you fatigue it. You just got to manhandle these a little bit. You can put a little bit of heat on it, like map gas or something like that, but I wouldn't go crazy. Take the drive shaft side out first. Slide the bolts out. Now it gives you access to the couplers that are here. So to put it in relation... You're like, good Lord, how am I going to get, what am I going to do to get in here? What am I going to have to take apart? You know, how am I going to get this up? Yeah, there's a snap ring here, smaller one. There's an inner one that holds the bearing in. You don't have to do all that. Just take these three out that are on the drive shaft side. Once you take those out, this coupler will come off the end. Then you can take out the other three. And voila, now you have a coupler. Minus one ratchet and two sockets, but hey, we're getting somewhere. GM likes their Loctite, so you know that you got to put Loctite on it when you put it back together again. Definitely a healthy dose, dip them, and when you put them back in to make sure you don't have any issues. This one's not bad. I've seen a lot worse, but we've got this whole power line out, so that's why we're upgrading. On these collars or these uh, bushings, whatever you want to call them, couplers, they make two different sizes. They make a 10 millimeter in diameter, they make a 12. So before you start going too crazy and be like, all right, cool, great, I'm going to get this done today. Yeah, we thought the same thing too and ran into a snag. The company had sent us the 10 millimeter, not the 12 millimeter. So kind of had to wait a couple of days to get them. But putting it back together again is relatively simple. Really don't have an orientation of what's front, what's back. It's, you know, it's standard coupler. Obviously, there is torque specs for putting this back together again. Uh, make sure you follow the torque specs. Now, on that coupler, this is the input shaft that's going into the um, clutch. 
This is where our pilot bearing is going to run. This is where our clutch assembly is going to line up. This goes on the front of it. These bolts go through this way. So always do the drive shaft side first, then do your output shafts. Um, that way you can tight, you can lock this shaft down, torque these down to the proper spec, then move your torque tube back and then assemble this. Obviously, bolt, lock tight, torque specs. Once you get this done, then flip the drive shaft over and do the other side. I have it laid out on the table. I did not move the drive shaft, so I knew what was front, what was rear, and that's the way I laid it out. Always lay it out, orientate it, how you took it apart, so that way it goes back together the same way. All right, I got my bionic arm back up on the bench. Lord knows at my age you need it. You slide this back into the tube, and if everything goes right, To me, here, bitch. Oh, oh. oh, Woohoo! It didn't pop out. Now we just do a little tappy tappy and a rappy rappy and make sure this snap ring is seated. Because we do not want this coming apart. And there you have it. One torque tube with couplers. But that, in essence, is. You know, Corvette Bill's bionic arm. Um, that's pretty much, you know, in a nutshell, how to basically take a torque two apart, change the couplers, and put it back together again. We wanted to do an informative video. That's why we did this video. A lot of people don't. A lot of people drive Corvettes. They don't understand what the torque tube is. They don't understand how it's put together. We try to be educational. We try to make you laugh while we do everything. But at the same respect, we also want to give you knowledge. Knowledge is power. The more you understand about your car, the more you're in tune with your car better off you're going to be longer to last. Uh, we did this video because we are doing a race car setup. So we are literally rebuilding the entire power line. And me and Jack both decided, you know what? We haven't touched bases on torque tubes. We haven't taken them apart. Some people want to understand them, some people don't. You know, it's entirely up to you. We try to put the information out there to better inform you on what the car is, you know, what we're about. If you would so kindly like, comment, subscribe, we want to hear from you. We want to hear your likes. If you like the video, let us know. If you don't, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, we'll have more fun stuff up. We just, we're trying to cover everything as a whole. Uh, make sure when you subscribe to hit that bell. Like I said, like, comment, subscribe, check out our socials down there at the bottom and we'll see you next time.